Thank you everyone for joining us today uh, for another session of the MSXL Toronto Meetup Group. Uh, today we have Paula Guilfoyle from Ireland. It's quite late for her, so thank you Paula for joining us today and for making the effort of presenting uh, so uh, late at night for you. And the topic, I, I think it's so uh, important and useful for everyone who works with Excel. So I will introduce you in a minute, Paula. Just uh, I'm just going to take the opportunity to um, present the group for those who are new and also give some instructions and uh, tell people about the next sessions before we can start our session, okay? So, uh, as you can see in my screen, you have here, uh, you, these are the icons you should look you should look for in your screen and it's difficult to say to tell you where they could be because there's so many ways of joining teams uh, on your desktop with your with an application or you can join using the browser or you can join you using your mobile device so depending on all that icons may be a little bit in different places but excuse me, these are the icons you need to look for to turn on and off your mic and your camera. This one here is the icon that should give you access to the chat area. And this icon here uh, allows you to say, hey, I have a question or I have a comment. It's like raising your hand. If any of us, myself or Paula or any of you uh, has problems with the internet connection and somehow uh, drops the connection, don't worry, just come back. Even if it happens with me, the session should continue and should be recorded. It has happened before and Teams was able to continue the recording, uh, even though my connection has, has um, dropped for, for a little while. Uh, for those who are new, if you want to put in the chat, if you are attending these sessions for the first time, we would like to hear that to, to know if we have new people coming and joining us today. Uh, the group has uh, started, uh, was founded uh, May, the first session was in May 2019. We have been meeting at least once a month, but sometimes more than once a month. For example, in this month of September, we will have a total of three sessions. This is the second one. And we try to bring content that is value, valuable for anyone working with Excel. And because Excel is such a wide, a broad tool, it can, it can address so many different situations and, and requirements. Of course, the topic of one session may be interesting for some of you and not so interesting for other people, but we try to, to bring a variety of different topics. Um, sometimes just, I would say, pure Excel. Other times we uh, uh, present content related to uh, integrating Excel with other tools. So just keep an eye on, 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 on your email inbox or, or your application uh, uh, meetup and uh, the sessions that are being prepared will be announced there. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the presentation on, on the chat area and uh, Paula will have uh, the opportunity to answer your questions at some point after during the presentation or after the presentation when when uh, Paula feels it's uh, it's it, it feel, feels better for her if it's better for her um, or more more convenient so uh, the session is being recorded uh, if I wanted to ask to try something new uh, that I haven't asked before, if you want to post a screenshot of the session um, on your social, social media accounts uh, at some point during the presentation, if you want to take a screenshot and just post on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, wherever you feel more comfortable, Twitter, and uh, the, uh, enter the hashtag MSXLToronto, it will, would be great so that we can see who posted and, and what's your feedback and, and maybe we can bring other people to the group and because the purpose is to have this content. It's a content, it's free, it's free content. Uh, it involves the effort of different people to prepare the session, to prepare the content, to deliver the session and all, all that. So the more people we can um, help with what we are delivering, the better, right? And we never know 
uh, when we are going to impact impact someone with the, the, the content that is being presented. So we could try that. Let me know what you think. And uh, something about the next some uh, some events happening soon. So Microsoft Ignite is happening uh, September 22nd and 24th. It's next week. Uh, I believe they are still accepting registrations. It was uh, before an in-person event uh, being de delivered, held in different cities around the world. But this year, for the circumstances that we are all living, it's delivered online. Feel free to take a look. It's not about Excel only. It's about anything Microsoft related. Uh, different applications, clouds, uh, power applications, um, uh, OneDrive, uh, artificial intelligence, you name it. You can find everything there. It's, uh, it's a, a huge event and just take a look at the calendar and see if anything is interesting for you. Next events uh, here in the group and not only in the group. So the first one that I'm mentioning here at the top is in fact another meetup group that is run by Microsoft here in Toronto. It's called uh, Microsoft Reactor Toronto. And I already texted you about this, sent a message before. I thought this could be interesting for some of you because I keep receiving um, inquiries, inquiries from people asking uh, how they can get certified um, by Microsoft in Excel or other applications. I don't know anything more about this session than what's being advertised on their page. So if you go to Meetup and look for Microsoft Reactor Toronto, you will see this session is happening today. In fact, later, I think around 8 p.m. or so here in Toronto. So if this is something that uh, you are interested in learning about, how you can get prepared and, and to get your certifications using Microsoft's uh, materials, just take a look there. You, I believe you can still register. And September 29th, we have uh, another session here. It will be Mark Proctor from the UK presenting about mastering ranges, uh, the building blocks of Excel. He knows uh, a few uh, nice tricks to deal with cell references and ranges and apply that in different features in X within Excel, not only in formulas, and get uh, very interesting results with that. And I'm sorry, I'm so excited about uh, October 14th event that I even lost my voice. So October 14th, I already uh, announced this event as well. You can check your emails if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, we will be celebrating the spreadsheet day. So the spreadsheet day exists since 2010. Uh, and I discovered that they existed last year only. And so I decided this year, why not make something different for to celebrate the spreadsheet day? And I invited Bill Gell and he accepted and was able to help me bring these amazing guests. Uh, I, I, I'm, I cannot tell you how excited I am because I think uh, it's um, the history value or, or the potential uh, history value is so interesting uh, that we have here that uh, I, I really want to hear what they have to tell us about uh, their participation in the development of the Excel tool. So I'm, I'm guessing that all of you already know Bill Jalen. He has been MVP for 16 years. He's been uh, following up the uh, evolution of the tool since then. He and he's been always in contact with the engineer, engineers in Microsoft's Excel team, helping them with feedback. And so he has seen a lot of what the tool has gone through uh, uh, in the past uh, almost two decades. And then Filstra is uh, the guy who, neg who negotiates with someone has your microphone on. Let's see here. Uh, I already did. You continue. Thank you. So then was the guy who negotiated with um, uh, Apple to. Oh, now I forgot the, the name. What's the name? Um, the name of the. <laughs> 
this uh, the previous uh, CEO of Apple. Um, who can help me? Anyways, I'll get Steve there. Jobs. Steve exactly. Jobs. Exactly. 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 <laughs> so he negotiated with Steve you, Jobs. You know him. Ah, no, I don't know him. <laughs> I, I, I won't have the, the, the privilege of knowing him in person anymore. None, none of us will, unfortunately. So then was the guy, who, the person who negotiated with Steve Jobs uh, how to bring the very first spreadsheet that ever existed, which was VisiCalc, uh, to the market. So they partnered together uh, and people were buying the program VisiCalc and Apple II computer to run the application and so it was a very profitable uh, business for both parts uh, and so then will tell us how he met the inventor uh, or the two guys who invented VisiCalc one had the idea or the other one who was more of the developer there's interesting um, uh, stories about that that we might be able to hear from from him that day and Rob Colley uh, is one of the project, used to be one of the project managers in the Microsoft Excel uh, team. He was there working when pivot tables and Power BI, um, all the Power BI environment, let's call it like that, not Power BI, um, Excel BI, so business intelligence, Power Pivot, Pivot Tables. He worked on developing those, those features uh, when they first started a few years ago. He now works uh, outside Microsoft. He has his own, its own company, of course, all focused on Power BI uh, products and, and, and services. Uh, he will also be able to tell us about his experience and uh, what happened when all those new features came in. And then that I didn't mention before, uh, that I was talk, uh, telling you about before, he was the guy who developed the solver uh, add-in in, in, in Excel. And finally, we also have someone from the current team. David Monroy is uh, working currently with the Excel team and he's uh, involved with uh, features in Excel online and other features. So he will be representing Microsoft this day to tell us what is their main focus at the moment and where they are planning uh, to put their efforts in the near future, uh, future uh, to develop Excel. OK, so I think it's all. Enough of me talking. Can I add one more event that is happening? Sure. So there is a Power Summit uh, North America happening on October 7th to 9th. Uh, it is a virtual event and it includes uh, uh, Excel as well. So Power Query and uh, Power Pivot side. Okay. Uh, remind, uh, please forward that information if you can, and then next session we will advertise that again. Okay. I'll put it in chat window. Okay, that is good. Good idea. Thank you. So today we have Paula. This is Paula's website, the Excel Club, that I strongly recommend you all to visit. Uh, I also recommend you to uh, check her YouTube channel. I particularly like uh, her, uh, a recent series that Paula started in her uh, YouTube channel, The Excel Corner Curator, Curator Corner, something like that. Paula will tell you how, what's the correct name, where Paula uh, every week presents, um, uh, talks about blog posts and videos, any content uh, related to Excel that she found uh, useful and, and interesting. So I'm going to stop presenting and Paula will be able to tell us all about that. I first met Paula in last December when uh, she was interviewed by Soil Anwar on the Excel Online Summit and I was so impressed with what she does and um, she's also been um, how can I say? She's also been talking about delivering content, sharing content, and consuming content and have a profit with it. So 
uh, be uh, be rewarded, being rewarded when you consume uh, advertising or content online, and with those rewards, you can forward part of it to people who are delivering the content that you enjoy, that you find valuable for your uh, professional profe profession, and uh, for your life. So I'm not sure if she will talk about that today, but it's a very interesting matter that I've been following closely and. Uh, I'm, I've been able, I've been wanting to join that system. I'm not there yet, but I should be soon in a couple of days, hopefully. Paula, thank you so much for joining us today, for being with us. Um, and uh, I just pass the mic and the camera to you and let us know what you get for us. Thank you, Celia. <clears throat> Um, the stuff that you were mentioning, the Excel Curation Corner is the new show that I've been doing. I've been doing it nearly two months now and I'm loving doing it. The whole idea was that, you know, I consume so much Excel content because I just do, because mm -hmm. I'm an Excel geek, um, that it's worth sharing with my own followers as well as my own content. So I just produce a video sharing some of the great content that I found during the week. and. Yeah, people seem to be enjoying it. So it's I'm getting some nice feedback from it. So that's um Yeah. That's I love it. The other thing you were mentioning is blockchain related. It's a little bit out there for some people. And to be honest with you, to get into it tonight would be very much sidetracking. Yeah. So it would from the conversation, the topic that we're going to talk about. We'll so get we'll, to another time. <laughs> we'll get to talk about that another time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just uh, one thing, uh, I would request all the participants to turn off their videos, please. Uh, except the presenter, you can have it, please. Go ahead, Paula, if you want to share your screen. Uh, I'm not sure if you share, share my screen. And I'm also going to turn off my camera to save on a little bit of bandwidth. OK, so thank you very much, Celia, for having me on and for the introduction that you gave me there. I have a quick introduction of my own to do. My name is Paula Guilfoyle. For those of you that don't know, but I know a lot of you in here do know me. I'm from Ireland. A bit of background, I am a mother of two. I'm a CPA accountant, an Excel geek and an MVP. In addition to being a mother and an accountant and an Excel geek, I have some other interests and they involve blockchain technology and Web3. I have some contact details here on the screen and I will share the workbook that I'm using after the presentation and you can find my contact details in it. So if there's any questions on anything that we cover here this evening, feel free to reach out to me and to ask me whatever it is that you want to ask me. So what we're going can to cover... I, sorry, yeah. Paula, can I just... Uh, I, I'm, I noticed that your YouTube channel is not in there. Oh. OK, so yeah, remember I to add that <laughs> so that channel. people can find a curator corner. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the topic this evening is tips for auditing Excel spreadsheets. And we're going to talk about common spreadsheet risks and the ways that you can control them. We're going to talk about types of spreadsheet fraud. We're going to talk about auditing tools, go to special error setting and handling. Then we're going to look at Spreadsheet Inquire and Spreadsheet Compare before we move into some additional things that you need to consider when you're working with Excel 365. So the first topic that we have is common spreadsheet risks and the ways to control them. The first risk that we would have is the risk posed by the unskilled user. Now, spreadsheets can be easily changed they may lack certain internal controls and they're definitely vulnerable to human error. Spreadsheet training is not just for beginners. In fact, lack of training could result in per spreadsheets such as improper referencing and inaccurate formulas. This, of course, is going to result in poor and unreliable outputs because we all know when you're working with data, the output is only good as the input. So the best control for this is to provide regular training to ensure that users are up to date with the latest versions of Excel in use 
And when you're using the likes of Excel 365, it is continuously changing and updating. So you really need to stay up to date. The second risk is the risk posed by the lack of guidelines for spreadsheet prep preparation. A lot of companies will have policies and procedures for spreadsheet preparation, especially if they need to be SOX compliant in America. Now, if the policies and procedures for spreadsheet uh, preparation and risks aren't adequate, then errors will become more common and lack of consistency will show up. So therefore, the likes of style, content and accountability, that all should be documented in a company's policies. And, and then you should really build your procedures for best practice on spreadsheet preparation. Talking about best practice on spreadsheet preparation, I do have some tips on this for you as well. So workbooks, these should contain a how to or an explanatory page. Inputs and assumptions, well, these should be kept on separate sheets to calculations and outputs should also be kept on separate sheets. You should try and keep a log sheet detailing changes to the workbook because this is going to help other users track and understand any changes that may have been made to the workbook over time. You should name and number your work sheets such as one underscore PL, two underscore balance sheet, three under, underscore cash flow. You should keep timelines consistent. So if you have a number of worksheets that have a timeline, you should keep the timeline in the same place on all of the worksheets. Your navigation should be simple as well. You should keep a contents page that links to the worksheets and the worksheet should link back to the contents page. When you're creating formulas, don't be afraid to create formulas at the lowest level and use the results from one formula as a criteria or a value or as an input for another formula because this will allow users to understand your workbooks better. And I'm sure many of you have picked up workbooks with these crazy formulas that you find fairly difficult to understand. And the final tip for best practice examples is insecurity. Now this covers a number of, of elements. Not all employees are going to need access to every spreadsheet. And if they do have access to spreadsheets, locking cells so formulas can't be changed is one type of security control that you can put into place. The third risk is the risk posed by inherited reused spreadsheets and human errors. Now spreadsheets are, they're always reused and they're always passed down within companies. But you'll find after cutting and pasting that spreadsheets, they, you know, they break. They don't end up as good as they were in the first place. Formulas are often damaged, they're overwritten, links can be broken. We're all human, we all chat, we all take breaks, and these are really common reasons why data entry errors such as skipped entries and transposed numbers happen. So some good controls for this is to keep a separate inputs and calculation sheet. Try to use data validation to restrict user inputs. Use control totals and batch totals to verify that the results are correct. And you could also probably use password protection to ensure templates aren't changed and you can lock access to certain cells so that vulnerable formulas are protected. The next uh, risk is the risk of loss of data. Now this, this is actually a fairly big risk. And as with any other software system, failure to back up and save spreadsheets can result in the loss of hours and hours of data entry or spreadsheet construction. And it's much easier to retrieve information than to redo a whole spreadsheet. So it's a good idea to save changes to a workbook as a new version and to keep a versions log because this will enable you to roll backwards if changes that are made need to be undone. Now Excel 365 have made some great improvements to this. There is the auto save in Excel 365, which works if you are saving on OneDrive or in SharePoint. Now, if we go to file, I don't have it turned on for this particular file, but we can see here we have a version history and you can open up older versions of files that have been saved using OneDrive and Excel. So all this manual saving different versions doesn't really need to happen if you're using Excel 365 and you're using it online with, uh, with OneDrive. 
So the final risk that we're going to talk about is the risk of fraud. Now, auditors can't prevent fraud, but we can act as a deterrent. And introducing some of the controls that I just mentioned to you a few minutes ago can also act as a deterrent. So I just have a little chart here for you. This was this is quite an old image that I found online. It was produced by the Tuck Business School and it studied a whole heap of spreadsheets and it came up with this percentages of error instances that can be found. And we'll see here that 37, nearly 38% of error instances in spreadsheets are hard coding errors, followed by reference errors, then logic errors, then errors caused by copy paste, omissions and data input. Now, even just this morning, I seen a tweet out by Eurosprig, the European Spreadsheet Risks Organization, about an organization, I, I can't remember the name of it, even though I read it this morning, that they accidentally emailed out personal details attached in an Excel spreadsheet. They emailed out personal details to people and there was a breach of data. And then they offered their staff a whole 50 euro compensation. But people shouldn't have access to spreadsheets with that sort of sensitive information that they can attach to spreadsheets. And, you know, this is something that's literally just happened. So you really need to make sure that you're on top of your control and your security with your spreadsheets. So mentioning fraud, we're going to move on now and we're going to talk about fraud for a couple of minutes because fraud has had a major impact in spreadsheet auditing the different types of frauds that have happened and knowing what to look out for will help you when you're auditing other people's spreadsheets. Now spreadsheet, spreadsheet fraud has caused the collapse of some companies and institutes including the entire collapse of the Jamaican banking system in the late 1990s and that was all down to problems with spreadsheets. So we're going to go through some of the most common types of spreadsheet fraud and the first fraud that I'm going to mention is data fraud. Now, this is where input data is replaced by false data values. For example, an Excel spreadsheet links may be redirected to a different data source, which changes the spreadsheet output, outputs. Now, this was um, done in the AIB all first fraud, and this resulted in a loss of about 690 million. So what happened here was that all first wouldn't pay the 10k routers fee for a direct data feed into the risk control section. Instead, what they did was they got Rosnack to download his exchange feeds into a spreadsheet. Rosnack then behind the scenes, he substituted the links to his private manipulated workbook and the total losses hidden by the fraud were almost 700 million. And on top of this, Rosnack also received exaggerated bonuses. Now, just to note on this, data fraud doesn't have to be committed where values are done are done by connections. It can be on data that is updated on a manual basis. The next type of fraud that I'm going to mention is incremental fraud. Now, this is seen in companies and in institutes, financial companies and institutes, really, where bonuses are calculated on the value of a changing portfolio for example, the likes of trading and stuff like that. Now, what happens is over time, the fraudster sequentially adds small amounts to cells hidden deep in the detail of the workbook. Now, this kind of in incremental approach, what it does is it avoids sudden output changes that would generate suspicion. Now, over time, the adjustments they will consider, they will make up a considerable difference and they'll result in a performance, an exaggerated performance related bonus. Now, after the increments are then removed on a gradual basis, and by the end of the whole process, the evidence of manipulation has been completely removed, but the trader has ended up retaining their bonuses. The next type of fraud is burial fraud. Now here, fraudulent changes are made to key transactions in a list. And then the user uses normal Excel sorting functions to sort the list. And when you're using large, large spreadsheets of data, these manual changes are very, very difficult then to find because they've been buried within the data. After this, we have functional fraud. Now this makes 
use of the extendable nature of Excel to create new functions beyond standard based Excel formulas. So it would include the fraudulent manipulation of macros or user defined functions that are difficult for an average user to understand. In really extreme circumstances, this functionality may be located or hidden on worksheets to avoid discovery. Now, the last type of fraud that I am going to mention is presentation fraud. And presentation fraud is basically, it, it's becoming increasingly common and it involves modifying the way spreadsheet is actually viewed or presented to people. So sometimes whole lines of data are made invisible, negative values are formatted to show as positive values, and the font color is used the same as the background color. Now, this was shown in the ProQuest fraud. This resulted in a loss of market cap to the tune of 437 million. So what happened in this particular fraud was Hertz accounting reconciliation spreadsheets. These contained hidden rows. So the false accountancy uh, entries were hidden when they were printed in hard copy. Hertz also used white font in these spreadsheets, which this ended up placing false information in white color text. So it was completely invisible. There are an awful lot more examples of fraud and spreadsheet errors, and I have a link here for you to the European Spreadsheet Risks Interest Group that you can hop over and take a look. I know quite a lot of what I've said here is very heavy, and to be honest with you, I hope that it has kind of frightened the bejesus out here enough for you want to sit down and say, okay, we should have some controls on our spreadsheets. So what can you do and what do auditors do? Well, there are audit tests. There are the Excel audit tools. There's go to special compatibility checker, which I've been using more and more as of late. There is spreadsheet inquire and then there's also spreadsheet compare. So we're going to talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail. So what do spreadsheet auditors actually look at? Well, when looking at common tasks performed by auditors and auditing, we can break the tests down into basically two different types of tests. We can have measures and we can have calculations. The common measures calculated when auditing a spreadsheet are listed here on the screen now. So you'd have the likes of the longest formula, most complex formula, workbook size, total of lines of VBA code, largest formula result and so forth. In addition then to the measures, there's also common calculations and tests that would be carried out by auditors when they're auditing spreadsheets. And these would look at the likes of unused input values, unused calculations, the use of precedent and dependent rules, blank cell references. You can see quite a list here on the screen of the types of calculations and tests that are carried out by auditors when looking at spreadsheets. These last three here would be more recent ones that auditors would need to take into consideration, such as manual refreshing calculations, data connections and data refresh. So Excel is equipped with some auditing tools. I'm just going to bring my ribbons down for a minute. So uh, now I've set up a small spreadsheet just so we can have a quick look at the auditing tools that are available in Excel. The auditing tools that are available in Excel are extremely basic. They allow you to trace precedence, trace dependence, uh, show formulas and evaluate formulas. But apart from that, they don't allow you to do too much. Now I'm going to go through them and I'm going to go through them fairly fast because I'm sure you probably are all very familiar with them. On the formulas tab, we have the formula auditing group of commands. In the little spreadsheet I have set up, I have a subtotal which we can see is linking to a different worksheet. Then I have a formula, I have a reference cell, I have another formula, I have another formula here and then I just put something in to create an error. If we wanted to, if we hit our trace precedence button, our trace precedence button will show us anything that feeds into the selected cell. So we can see here from this that this something is feeding in here from a different workbook. Now, if we click on this, 
actually my click's not working. And we say, okay, select the item and say, okay, it's going to jump us to the worksheet that it, that it is connected to. Now, if we go back into the cell and say trace dependence, trace dependence will show you arrows of any cells that the selected cell feeds into. So the cells that are dependent on the current cell. We can also then remove the arrows and we can use this show formula trick. Now show formula trick is going to convert everything on your spreadsheet into formulas so you can get a quick glimpse of what's going on. One of the problems I found with showing formulas is that when you have long formulas, the cells don't auto size so you can see all of the formula. Now I find show formulas a little bit better than formula text. Formula text will allow you to select a cell or a range of cells and will show you the actual formula for the cell, but that's adding more details to your spreadsheet. So I tend to like to use the show formula option. Evaluate formula we're going to look at now and I have a formula in here. It's a little if statement. It's a very, very small if statement, but evaluate formula is a brilliant tool to use if you're trying to understand how a formula works or if you have got the if you've got a, a result from a formula that you're just not expecting. Evaluate formula will walk you through the steps of the particular formula. So when I click evaluate formula, I have this evaluate formula button or screen here and we can see that this E6 is underlined. Now when we evaluate, it turns the underlined part into numbers. So you can see exactly what's going on at each step of the formula. So we can see there it's saying is this 13 greater than the greater or equal to the 15? It, it's true. Then give us 10%. We can evaluate that and now it's going to evaluate the whole formula to give us the result. At any stage, we can step in and we can edit our formula. Another little tool that I find quite useful is the watch window. Now the watch window can be a little bit finicky sometimes, but what the watch window will allow you to do is select cells, a group of cells, a range of cells that you can keep an eye on in a separate window when you're working on a different worksheet. So let me show you an example. We have this subtotal which we know is linking to a different worksheet. And if I hop over to that worksheet, the subtotal is coming from this cell here, which is based on a particular formula. So if I were to update a value in the formula, we can see what's happened in the other, in the other spreadsheet. But if we turn on our watch window, and I already have this cell selected, but I'll just add it again so you can see. So select add watch. You can then select a cell or a range of cells and it'll bring the cells in here. And this will show you, you can make these bigger or smaller. The workbook that we're working on, the sheet, the cell that we're watching, the current value and the formula that's working on it. Now, if I hop over to my other spreadsheet and I change this value here, we should see this value in here update. So I'll change this value here and you can see this value update in here. So if you're doing testing and you want to be able to see what's going on in other worksheets, the watch window is a great little tool for that. So that's the watch window. Now we're going to talk about error checking. So I have two errors on this spreadsheet. Errors are easily identified on your spreadsheets by the little green arrows. If you click on them, you get your little warning and it tells you that there is a problem. You have options then. It tells you what the error is and you can um, get help on the error, ignore it and so forth. But instead of going through each error on its own, what you can do is up on your formula auditing, you can select error checking and error checking will open up your dialog box and in here, it'll go through each error one at a time. So first it's found this first error up here. It tells me what the error is. So it's an inconsistent formula. It explains what an inconsistent formula is. We then have the option copy formula from left because it's realizing there's a formula on the left and it's quite often you copy formulas across. You can get help or you can ignore or you can edit in the formula bar. I'm going to ignore this error because it, it's not actually an error. And I'll show you how to change your error settings now in a minute. This then moves us down into the next 
error that it finds in the spreadsheet and then it'll go through each one of the errors until you either come out of it or you've got them all fixed. So it's saying that this is a divide by zero error. It will allow us to, um, it will give us help. We can show calculation steps, which is the same as the evaluate formula that we looked at earlier. We can edit the formula or we can ignore it. I'm going to ignore it even though um, it wasn't really, it, it is actually an error and it should be fixed. So we look there at the errors. There's no further errors in there, but the error checking is you have certain amount of controls over what Excel sees as an error. And this is done in your options. Now in the error checking there a second ago when it was before I said this was okay, there was an option down the bottom to go into your options, but you can also go into your options from file and you want to go into formulas and error checking rules. So we have error checking rules down here and in here you can define what it is that Excel recognizes as an error. For example, cells containing formulas that result in an error will show an error. Inconsistent calculated column formulas in a table, cells containing years represented as two digits and so forth. So we can see there that there is quite a lot of things that you can set as error checking. So that's from your Excel um, options under formulas that you can change these two. So that are, they're the basic auditing tools that are available in Excel. As I said, they are fairly basic. So sometimes we need to be a little bit more creative and do a little bit more. So what we're going to look at now Paula. is, yep. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, since we are moving on to a next level of auditing tools, I was wondering if there were any questions. Uh, Vivek has a uh, uh, hand raised. Uh, do you have a question, Vivek? Maybe it was just yeah, an... no, okay. No, okay. Long back, it was already answered. Okay, that's great. Uh, anyone with uh, any questions from uh, about this first section that maybe Paula could answer before moving on? Sorry to interrupt you, Paula, since yeah. I interrupted already. <laughs> Just thought, uh, but it seems there's no other questions. So thank you. Yeah, move on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at GoToSpecial now. Now, GoToSpecial is a tool in Excel and it enables you to quickly select cells of a specified type within your Excel worksheet. Now, very often when an auditor comes to audit an Excel spreadsheet, the first thing that they're going to do is remove all excess formatting from the spreadsheet. I'm not going to do that because I want to demonstrate something else to you and there is a reason for it. I like to highlight my spreadsheets with different colors so I can quickly identify different parts of a workbook. And if I have removed formatting, then I'm not going to be able to fully understand the thought behind the, the process behind what the spreadsheet generator, the spreadsheet user was trying to do in the first place. So I have a spreadsheet set up here. I have it set up with a lot of errors and I have the errors put in here on purpose so we can go through this demonstration. The go to special can be accessed using F5 on your keyboard and you get this go to box and in here we have our little special. And the go to special will allow you to quickly jump to different parts of your workbook. So for example, if I select conditional formatting, it quickly jumps to all of these cells and selects all of these cells up here that have conditional formatting in them. If I press F5, I also know these particular, a lot of these particular cells also contain data validation. So these cells here contain data validation. Now cells that contain data or conditional formatting that's automatically applied to them. Quite often, if you want to highlight these particular cells, you won't be able to overwrite the conditional formatting rules that are in there. So that won't work for some of these. So, we are going to just bring back up our go to special. We will go into our special and this time we're going to select all of our constants and we're going to select all of our constants that contain text. And that didn't work for me because I had cells selected instead of the entire workbook. So that was my error. 
constants that contain text. And quickly, all of the cells on the spreadsheet, on the worksheet that we're working on, is going to jump to all of the constant cells that contain text. Now, from here, while I have these highlighted, I can quickly come along and we can color these in. Now, we can see straight away that there is a problem. These cells up here won't color because there is conditional formatting applied to them. But we can see down here that these are constants with text. So there is a problem. Now, we do have the errors showing us, but assuming that the errors have been turned off and the spreadsheet user has disabled them, we can quickly find these text values using something like this. Now, um, because these are in as text, we can see that, that this formula isn't able to add these values up. We go back in here to F5 and bring in our special. And this time we are going to take constants with numbers. And it's quickly highlighted all of the cells for us that have constants with numbers in them. Now I'm going to highlight all of these cells in yellow. Now, if any of you have spotted this, there are cells out here outside of the table that have been highlighted, but you can't really see the text. So what has happened here is that the user has used the same color front font as they have used as the background. So they're basically, they have hidden the cells. They've hidden the content of the cells. Now, the reason why they've done that would have to be explored and the impact would also have to be explored. But we can see straight away that there is a problem, another problem here with the spreadsheet. Let's go back in now that we've highlighted them to our spread our special. And this time we will take all of our formulas and we'll just select all of our formulas. And we're going to highlight all of our formulas in a gray color. And again, we will go back in. And we will highlight all of our formulas with errors. In red. So very, very quickly, you can begin to see the structure of this workbook and you can very, very quickly spot some errors. For example, we can see that if we look closely at our data set, we have January, February, March, and then we have quarter one. Now for this top region, we have, um, there's no there's no formulas in here, there's hard coded values in here, yet here is a formula and here is a formula. So chances are these values should also be formulas. We have formulas over here where the rest of the data for the particular month is coming in as values, as just normal, uh, numerical cells, but then we have these formulas up here. So th these are all things that quite quickly you be able to spot differences, see problems, and then go ahead and investigate what the particular problems are and fix the problems. Now there are other checks as well that you can do. We can check for inconsistent formulas. So for example, if we select a row, I will go into my special and this time I am going to look for a row difference and we'll see it's selected this cell here as having a particular row difference. Now if we look at the formula, this cell is, it's summing up the cells, not above it, but the cells beside it. So again, that is a, another cell that would need to be investigated. So we can color the cell in purple because we know the cell needs to be investigated as well. If we come down here, we can do the same down here. We can press F5, go into our special. We can look at a row difference and we see this cell here seems to be different. So if we look at this cell here, it's going from F19 to F21. Now row F19 is hidden. If we look at our other formulas, these are only going from G20. So what's going on here? So quickly we can unhide our row and Although this formula is shown up as the inconsistent formula, this formula is actually right as it's summing all of the values, but the rest of the column is incorrect because it hadn't been taken in the values for the hidden row. In addition to this, then we can also, if we go back into our F5 and go into our special, we can check for our precedence. So we can select a row and check for our precedence. And this will show you any cells that feed into a particular cell. 
So I had this total down here selected and we can see that it's selecting these cells here as well. So we can just color these in red so we have an idea of what way the formulas are going. So I'm sure you can see very, very clearly now the problems in this worksheet and the structure of this workbook. And you can see clearly that there's things that definitely, definitely need to be investigated. From here, you will go through, an auditor would quite often go through manual steps. They would talk to the spreadsheet generator. They would figure out why things are wrong and then they would go ahead and make the changes and make all of the fixes. So that is GoTo Special, and I'm sure many of you have probably seen a demonstration of GoTo Special before, but like that, it also has its limitations. In more recent versions of Excel, like Excel 365, if you were to look for a rich data type or a linked data type as such, GoTo Special won't bring you to them. GoTo Special won't bring you to dynamic arrays either. So you need to consider alternative things with the newer features that are coming into Excel because these older ways of auditing don't quite cut it anymore. So now we are going to look at Spreadsheet Inquire. Spreadsheet Inquire is a brilliant um, tool. I think it's a tool that's fairly unused. You don't see much content or much talk about it online. But it is a tool that is fairly specialized for people that are looking at auditing spreadsheets and documenting spreadsheets and that need to be SOX compliant and stuff like that. Spreadsheet Inquire was introduced in Excel 2013 and later versions, and it's only available in the Professional Plus Pro and higher editions. It is an add in. And that means that you need to turn it on. Now, I already have it actually turned on, but for those of you that don't know how to turn it on, if we go to our options, go to our add-ins. Oh my screen, oh, I thought I was gonna crash there. Uh, go to our, com, is it our comms add-ins and spreadsheet inquiries there, tick box say OK, and you'll get this new ribbon with Spreadsheet Inquire. Now, the options that are available on this new ribbon, we've got workbook analysis, workbook relationship, worksheet relationship, cell relationship, compare files, clean access formatting, which is really helpful because, as I mentioned, many auditors will straight away come in and clean all the additional formatting. There is workbook passwords, and that's just for storing passwords and that that you're going to need when you're auditing the workbook. So what do all of these particular tools do? Well, workbook analysis, I need to save my workbook first before I can run, will run through your workbook and it will create a report for you that will detail all of the items and more that I mentioned earlier on as things that you need to have controls in place for and things that you need to actually check for. Now, dependent on the size of your workbook, dependent on the number of sheets, the number of formulas will depend on how long it takes this report to actually run. So it's ran here for us. And the first thing we have is a summary. And this is basically a summary of the workbook and an overall statement of what's going on. So for example, we can see here the entire workbook contains 391 formulas. Formulas with numeric values is 364. And we have a summary. This is basically a summary of what's going on in the workbook. Over here on the left, we have a menu. And by clicking on any of these, we can find more detailed information that is available in your worksheet. For example, we have a linked workbook and it tells us the workbook that it's actually linked to. It's also shown us here that we have some hidden sheets in this workbook. So if you have some hidden sheets, there's always something that should be investigated. Something that should be investigated even more are very hidden sheets. There's no reason to really have very hidden sheets in Excel. And if I remember, I will show you how to find and unhide very hidden sheets after this, we then have formulas. So it gives us details of all formulas, array formulas. So we can see our array formulas in here. It tells us the sheet name, the cell address, the actual formula and the value given. 
formulas with errors, logical value, formulas with text values, numerical constants, and um, formulas with referencing hidden cells, which we seen earlier on as the hidden row. Um, unique formulas, if there's duplicate formulas, these are something that you would need to investigate. If you have inconsistent formulas, again, something you should definitely consider investigating. This moves on then to cells. So you can see the cells that are dependent on other cells. Cells with text, cells with numbers, invisible cells, cells that are something that you should look at as well. And um, cells with validation criteria, um, blank cells, occupied cells, all the details that you need are in there. Then after this, we have ranges. So we have hidden rows and columns. We have named items. Now this named item is actually a connection and I have two data connections in this workbook which haven't really been fully picked up. And then we also have some warnings. Now warnings are always something that you need to address. For example, this workbook contains hidden sheets. It contains formulas with errors and the workbook title has not been set. So this makes it really, really, really easy to begin an audit on an Excel workbook and an Excel spreadsheet. But the actual workbook analysis report in this format is very hard to work with. So what we can do is export this report into Excel. And I'm going to export it and save it. And then I'm going to open it. which it should be opening and here it is here. Okay, so for every tab that we had in our inquire report, we now have a new sheet for here. And this workbook is a really, really great workbook for documenting an entire spreadsheet at the click of a button. And also then using the spreadsheet in your audit file and for your reviewer comments and all your the documentation that you would need to go along with an audit. So we can see the summary sheet here, our linked workbooks, our data connections, our hidden sheets. So there's a sheet named sales and the sheet named connected. There is a very hidden sheet, which is called very hidden. And we can go through all of our formulas, our array formulas, error formulas, logical formulas. It just, everything is in here. So what this makes it really, really easy to do is now we have this, it's, it's documented for us. Anything that we need to look at, for example, these um, formulas with errors, reviewer can put in this comment, he can then fix the error or fix, fix the error before he puts in this comment, say it's now fixed and why the error was there. And this is always there and available as a reference and a backup. So that is a spreadsheet inquire the workbook analysis. Now I did say that it there is some sheets in this that it didn't pick up and that's the data connections. And we're going to look at that in limitations for a minute but for the moment. We're going to move on with workbook relationship. Now workbook relationship, what this does is it goes through your workbook and it tries to find and it doesn't seem to be pulling in anything for me. There we go. It goes through your workbook and it looks for any connections that you have that this workbook might be connected to. So this central book here, we can see we've got two things feeding into the workbook we were on. This one has a red X means that this connection, it's actually broken at the moment. So the file is missing or it's not accessible. And this can cause problems with data, that the data is out of date or the formulas and that aren't actually running properly. So this is a really, really handy tool for finding connections that may be broken. So this, as we can see, is a separate Excel sheet, but this is identifying that there is a connection, a data connection of some sort. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us what the data connection is, and we need to go through some more manual steps for looking at data connections. Worksheet relationship is very much the same, but it actually looks at the particular worksheet that you're on and it goes and checks to see what cells are linked to different cells in different workbooks. Now this can take some time. So we can see that I am in this worksheet or I'm in this workbook. These are all of the worksheets, the green arrows showing what way they're linked. So we can see the sheet auditing and auditing two has a two way link. 
we can see our very hidden sheet is feeding into our sale sheet, but our sale sheet isn't feeding into our very hidden sheet and so forth. Then we can also look at cell relationship. Now cell relationship probably will take too long to run, but you can set your set this to see how much data it actually looks for. And it goes through all of the cells to see how all of the cells are linked to each other between the actual workbook. Now that's still running there and it is going to run for another second. It's finding too much. Do you know what? I'm actually just going to stop that because it is just going to take too long to run. If I can stop it without it crashing. There we go. So that is our workbook relationship, our worksheet relationship and our cell relationship. Now we do have another tool and this is compare files. Now, when you've made all your changes to your workbook, so you've audited your spreadsheet, you found all your errors, your omissions, your mistakes, you've updated them all. You need to compare your two worksheets for whatever reason. Maybe you want to compare versions because some things were not documented. You can use this compare files tool. Now I'm going to open up two new spreadsheets to show you this in action. OK, so this spreadsheet is the same as the one that we looked at earlier on that we highlighted all the errors in earlier on. So we've created this spreadsheet. We know where all of the problems are. We then go along and we fix the spreadsheet. We fix all the errors. We add in a log sheet and we make a few other different changes. But we need to compare these two spreadsheets. So from this, we can compare these using our spreadsheet compare feature. Now under inquire, we say compare files and it asks us what two files we want to compare against each other. So I'm going to just compare these two files and hit compare. And it's going to run a report. And it is going to do a full comparison of our two spreadsheets. So what we have here is our first spreadsheet and our second spreadsheet and all of the errors that have been changed. Now we have details of all of the changes down here. So this is our detailed log. We can select between the different changes. For example, if we only wanted to see the entered values, we can select entered values over here on the left. This will give us details on the in the detail of the values that have been entered. And if you click on it in the detail, it'll jump to the cells that have been actually changed. And you can see the difference in the cells in the two workbooks. So we have deleted a value in the original workbook. We have this 156 and then we've deleted it out here. Now, if you remember when we were looking at this particular spreadsheet, that this was the cell that was hidden with the white front font and the white background. We can look then at formulas. We can go through basically everything and see all of the different changes that have been made to the spreadsheets and quickly identify everything that we need to identify. Now we can export this as well into an Excel spreadsheet. And when you export it, you basically get this screen down here before all of the items enabled as a list report into an Excel spreadsheet. You can show the details when you have a particular cell selected. It'll show the details of what the changes were. You can also show the formulas, which will change the spreadsheet to show all the original formulas. For example, this one was adding in that invisible cell over here. We can see we have now removed that. So if you need to compare two spreadsheets for whatever reason to see the differences, spreadsheet compare is the tool to use. So there are some limitations, as I mentioned, and you'd be all glad to hear that I am nearly finished because this is a bit of a, a heavy presentation when it comes to theory stuff. Excel 365 has had many, many updates and the updates are just rolling out like there's no tomorrow. And I'm loving the updates, but when it comes to auditing Excel spreadsheets, they are causing difficulties. I found the likes of Spreadsheet Inquire 
isn't picking up anything. What? Well, sorry, not that it isn't picking up anything. It's not picking up connections, any Power Query connections that we may have. It's not picking up anything that we may have in a data model. In this particular workbook, I have a Power Pivot model set up. I also have a data connection. So you would need to check your data connections by going into query and connections, manually checking to see if there is a data connection done this way. But the newer data connections, the data types, the linked data types, these don't come up as a as a data connection in Spreadsheet Inquire and Spreadsheet Compare or in these queries and connections. So what can we do about this? Well, dynamic arrays and linked data is what's causing the issues. So we can show formulas. So if we go to our formulas and say show formulas, when we show formulas on this spreadsheet, we can see this build array, the dynamic array that we have isn't showing up. It's, it's not showing that there's anything in them particular cells. Now we know these are spilled array and there isn't anything in the cells, but it's very hard to identify that there is a spilled array in this spreadsheet. Now you can also, if we go to our workbook statistics, we can see here in our workbook statistics that we have uh, 29 formulas in this particular worksheet. And we don't actually have 29 formulas in this particular worksheet. We have two formulas in this worksheet, but what it's counting is it's counting the dynamic array values as formulas, even though when we show formulas, there's only one particular formula there. So we have problems with dynamic arrays and we've also problems with recognizing a data link cell as a data link cell. Now we have this as a stock data type. And if we were to say is text, is text, And it's not text, but if we say if it's a number, it's also saying it's not a number. So it can be quite hard to detect these linked data types. And that's where the compatibility checker comes into play. So I'm going to quickly show you the compatibility checker. If we go to info and in our info, check for issues and check compatibility. Now, as I said, most of these issues are arising from the newer features of Excel 365. So what we want to be able to do is go down through our compatibility checker and check for basically these new features such as dynamic arrays and linked data types. We There are also new formulas in here as well. And this formula getting data, the stock history function, these are new and aren't in other cells. We can see here that this workbook contains data types that are not supported in the earlier versions of Excel. If we select find, it's going to jump us straight to them data types. And at the moment, using compatibility checker is really the only way that we can come across these newer features in Excel. So that is basically it. That is my presentation on auditing Excel spreadsheets. I know it has been a heavy session and I guess I will open up for questions. I disagree. It was not a, he a heavy session. I was enjoying every minute of it. And by the looks of the chat, I think people have been enjoying it too. <laughs> I should open. I haven't had my chat open. I have a uh, question, Paula. This is Dick yeah. Moffat. Hi, you, I, I've been involved in the help and the, the comments. Um, did you mention data validation? I did. Yes. The okay. First thing, yeah, and the go to special. And how? And, and and right. Did you mention protection? I did. I but didn't you, okay. go into it in detail. I did mention it in the spreadsheet controls. Okay, because because to me. Uh, you know, data validation con controls input. Uh, uh, you can use conditional formatting also to to uh, indicate that it's out of a range. For example, if there's acceptable ranges, um, I sort of disagree with you about very hidden, but it is kind of obscure how I use very hidden. But to say you shouldn't use it at all, nah, I'm not sure I agree with. 
One of the things, the last thing I'm going to say that, that I find interesting is very early on in my use of Excel, uh, in fact, it was in the very first version uh, just that I used, which was what, Excel 4? Um, I discovered a thing called precision as displayed. Now, nobody, nobody, nobody uses dis precision as displayed. And I actually don't use it much because I use protection, data validation, conditional formatting stuff. But can, do you know what can precision as, dis as displayed is? No. Okay, what it is, it's a setting in your options. And it means if you format a cell to be, say, a dollar sign to do decimal, two decimal places, whatever you type in that cell will be rounded to dollar signs to two decimal places. Think about okay. that. So this is brutal, all right? This is like, you know, this is heavy stuff, right? Because it takes over what you're entering and will change what you typed, which is what people say, oh, we can't have that. Well, yes, you can. Because if you're entering dollar figures uh, and they got to be to the penny, then of course you're going to force them to the penny. Um, if you have calculations that say are, are uh, based on uh, 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 decimal values, so times, times a, a, a VAT tax or something, right? That could return a, a, an extended uh, number of decimals. This will bring that round it internally to one to the penny. And then all the additions will be accurate visually as displayed, right? Now, yeah. I use this if the application, the spreadsheet absolutely has to be 100% no variation. So then I'd use data validation, conditional formatting, um, um, protection, and underneath it all, I'd use precision as displayed. It's, it's an interesting thing. If you don't want it to be precision as displayed, don't format the cell at all, and it'll it'll yeah. show as many decimals. As I so that's would a thought. tend to use, and I would encourage people when they're using when they're dealing with currencies, no matter what, when you're dealing with currencies, uh, open. I wasn't aware of that precision that you just talked about there. Um, yeah. Never heard of it, so that's thank you. <laughs> because been, there, been there forever, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I would have always told people, no matter what, when you're dealing with currencies, you use the round function. Right, which means if they're typing it in in one cell, that means you display it somewhere else, right? So that means your input is separated from your output, and you use the round put round in the output to solve it. You're right, but that's more. It's only one checkbox to use precision as yeah. displayed. Now, uh, like I said, some people say, I don't like the fact that it would change what I type. Well, it doesn't really, unless you, the developer, has said it's got to be to two decimal places. And I don't give a crap what you type in, as long as it's two decimal places, right? I, I look, at, look at it. But anyway, uh, great, great presentation, though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dick, can I ask that precision, uh, with that precision tool, you can uh, define to which cells it will be applied to, nope. or it will be, okay, so it will be applied to the entire workbook. Entire workbook, that way you oh, don't okay. have any problem. So whatever it shows on the screen, that is the that is the logic that's used, that result is used in formulas. So you know the bit about table typing plus one and minus two? I ran into that years ago with a major corporation and one of the people was doing that with their all their financial reports every month for this major multi-billion dollar corporation. And I beat that out of her, right? And but but that's a scary thing. But if you use this, that goes away because if they type plus four, it'll internally round it to that value, right? And so you won't get these hidden values off to the right in decimal places that end up perverting your bottom line. And the other thing is everything adds up visually. Nothing a CFO hates more than if it doesn't add up visually, right? You know, they go crazy. Right. Yeah. Even though, even though to the penny doesn't matter. So anyway, that yeah, I, 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 there's a bunch more things I could say, add, but this is great. That was a great, great uh, presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Paula. I was thinking uh, when we oh, first one more, started... Celia, Celia, oh, one more. Dick. Do you know Ann? <laughs> do you do you know Ann Walsh? Yeah. Do you know Ann Walsh? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Say say hello to her for me. 
anyway, oh. she's, I, I like it. Yes. <laughs> I know Ann Walsh. There you go. But, okay. I, so, I can, I can do this. I can play the, do you know game? Nobody else. Okay. Okay. I'm done. Just use the, I'll, I'll... Was it just, did that just come up from an Irish connection because, because you heard the Irish accent and, and came into your head? No, because she's in Excel and she does training and she's Irish and, and she's and Irish, she, yeah. <laughs> and she's and she's very visible in Ireland, right? Right? Yeah. It's it, oh. it's not like me asking if you know somebody and they live in Montreal. Well, I don't live in Montreal, so how would I know them? But it's a small community of trainers in Excel that I thought you might know her. That's all. I know her too. Yeah. We 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 probably can uh, we could bring her one one of these days to present to her to her as if but she's she available. Okay, um, I was going to mention Paula wh when we started this group, uh, chatting with the other members of the team, Dick and Vivek. We were talking what this group should be about, and one of the first things and one of the main uh, reasons to create this group that we all agreed with was that it should uh, help us uh, creating awareness of um, Excel group good practices. So help people improve that their good practices when they are using Excel. And uh, this is for sure one of the best sessions we had uh, to, to address that, that purpose. Um, I learned a lot. I, I also was able to remember a lot of things that I already knew, but I keep forgetting to use. And so, yeah, it was a great session. I, I, I think it's one of those that we could easily share uh, in our companies and say, hey, everybody takes one hour and just... <laughs> <laughs> to watch the video because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it could help us uh, with detecting a lot of issues with our spreadsheets and avoid those disasters that you mentioned at the beginning. I think it, it's very important in larger organizations more than smaller organizations because they do have compliance that they have to tick the box on. And under the SOX compliance, there is quite a lot on spreadsheet risks and it is something that needs to be addressed by these quoted companies um, and I've done quite a lot of work on it and I've set people up using Spreadsheet Inquire as part of their internal audit of control procedures and I've had some SOX teams come back to me with feedback on wow this is really really cool and they had never seen it before and this is the best spreadsheet auditing system we've ever seen and yeah it's um, it's big business in the states with all the SOX compliance that's record that's that's needed all the documentation that has to be kept and stuff on it. Mm -hmm. There's Excuse a lot me. to it, for sure. Yes. Hey, uh, really great presentation, I got to say, Paula. Really, really enjoyed that. But can you help us out a little bet what you're having in the chat? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. How familiar well, are you with VBA scared. and TypeScript? Say that again? How familiar are you with VBA and TypeScript? I'm not. I don't do uh, VBA or TypeScript. <laughs> We were kind of debating that whether TypeScript is going to replace VBA or not, because we were talking about how VBA can help shore up some of the um, the security things that data validation doesn't get. Yeah, do you know, like I'm so not a VBA fan that I hope Power Query can nearly knock it out of business soon. <laughs> oh, now Richard's chiming in again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking about how well, it's like Microsoft's new toy and all that. Well, here, here's this is Richard again. I'm not monopolizing, but this he was talking about me. Um, Power Query isn't going to cure cancer and find a yeah. or or COVID and and bring peace to the Middle East. Okay, so if you're if somebody is typing data directly into Excel, Power Query isn't going to do any good. All the stuff you're talking about will be will be good for that. And the second thing, uh, TypeScript. Um, my argument about TypeScript always has been that TypeScript is basically JavaScript and uh, Excel people don't want to learn JavaScript all over again. Plus, on top of it all, it's not as capable as VD, VBA in Excel and Java developers are not interested in doing anything in Excel. So it, to me, J the JavaScript is, 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 is going to die on the vine because there's just nobody's going to care. And, and trust me, I've seen that happen to a lot of things like Precision as displayed, for example. So anyway, uh, that's my uh, sorry, Celia, but that's my argument. And uh, if you want to talk to me later, uh, 
Who is that? Yeah. Brandon or Alan? <laughs> Email yeah, me. This is Brandon. I see I'm bringing back nightmares for people on their SOX compliance. I see a comment there. I brought back nightmares that I had of SOX. Oh, SOX <laughs> compliance is a nightmare. I was curious, Paula, you, you mentioned European spreadsheet organization or something like that? Yeah, that? the European spreadsheet risks, the Eurosprig website. Eurosprig. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, they have quite a lot of information on all this type of stuff and the types. If you go in and you really spend an hour reading some of the horror stories, they actually have a section called horror stories. You, you would be horrified. <laughs> so that is something that we can forward along the link with the video there is, for, to the video <laughs> for actually, this session. There is actually a link in, the, there'll be a link in the workbook. I think I put it, it is on, there's definitely a link on one of the pages. Oh yeah, on my fraud page when I, when I share the workbook. Okay. Um, yeah. I have a link straight through to it on the fraud page. Yeah, I was saying this, that is a good motivation to send along with a link to the video when I ask people watch this session. Here's why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with your stories. OK, so uh, any other questions? Uh, right. Dick was uh, uh, very active there on the comments, the chat. Uh, someone suggested freeze pains as one of the good practices that could also be useful in some circumstances to help people always you, be yeah. able. Yeah. Yeah. I, Another, go ahead. Who's I, had a, I had a quick one. I'm, I'm Wes from uh, New York. I'm, I'm just moving into um, data analytics from a role where I just use Google Sheets, I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I, I'm learning Excel right now, and I was wondering, um, I know like going in and auditing and stuff, I know there are there is capability for shared workbooks. Is there so with that version history, is there a way for you to pull like who made those edits so that you can actually either talk to them about that or coach them on that for if you need to help somebody? Yeah, I will tell you who last edited the workbook, but there are some additional tools as well. There is a Microsoft Discovery Risk and Assessment server tool. Um, now, I don't know when their last update was on it, but a, a tool like that will analyze all of your spreadsheets and tell you exactly who's made changes and when, what spreadsheets are critical business spreadsheets. Um, yeah, so you'd get an awful lot more detail from the this server software than you would from the actual, actual Excel add-ins that we looked at there or from the version files. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, there's there's like a cell edit history in Google Sheets, which is probably the only thing that I'm super stoked about in Google Sheets at this point. But uh, cool. Thank you again for the presentation. Thanks for staying up late with us. No problem. Thank you, Wes. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, there was another comment about uh, people being aware or the need of people be aware of how the the different operations what's the order when you have a formula that has different uh, operations multiplication additions parentheses what goes first and some people although this is uh, taught in school from a very uh, young age people tend to forget about that and it, sometimes it creates errors uh, if yes, we, don't, we are not careful uh, when creating the formulas. Yeah, very good point. Something I will add to my presentation for next time. <laughs> <laughs> there you that, go. <laughs> yes, that that is definitely um, a problem when it comes to human errors on spreadsheets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dick very Richard, old. Dick here again. Uh, I just forgot about one thing that I think you might want to look at. Uh, have you ever seen how you can you can Control the scroll area of a worksheet by going into the VBA editor into the and going into the properties of the worksheet, right? And yeah. you can define the, the area that you're allowed to go to in that sheet. I find that's useful if I don't want people drifting off to the right and going down and typing all over the place. Although there are some issues with that, I, that I, I, and I'm not sure what they are. But uh, if I just type a cell reference like A1 to H50, 
it it says you can't go beyond that range. I find that a very useful thing if I if I want to control it. Turns it into like a form, you know. I would use uh, that when I'm building dashboards. Yeah, well. So people can scroll away from the dashboard. Right, or make if they're uh, supposed to, or there's a, well, the whole idea is to make it more app-like, right? That's yeah. the whole goal here. People want to feel confident that they can use it like an app. That's mm. that's what we have to work towards. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? If you want to turn on the, your videos, we are approaching the end of the session and say hi and just feel free to do so. Uh, here. Alan is in the audience and has been very active. Hi, Alan, I haven't said hello. And Gronya has come on as well. Gronya sent me an email on YouTube earlier on saying she was hoping to get on. So thanks for hopping in. Hi, Danielle. I've 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 talked to Granny a few times, and one of the things that she's always um, worried about is uh, finding ways to audit her 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 books. She's always asking how how can I make sure, and she has a few uh, tricks of her own about that. She's very knowledgeable about that 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 topic as well. It's saying there is there a version of Spreadsheet Inquire. Sp specifically for formulas. No, there isn't, but in Spreadsheet Inquire, there's a whole section on formulas. And if you pick that particular section, it is quite detailed. And I think there's about 50 different variants of stuff it looks for within formulas. Any other questions there that I missed? No. Appreciate it. There's there's one uh, shortcut that I like to use. I think it only works well with um, simple formulas. But if you have a formula that re references another cell, maybe in another sheet, if you go control left square bracket, square bracket yeah, yeah, it takes you to where that other cell is. So sometimes it's and useful. Control when you're... right square bracket was meant to jump you back again. Well, for some reason that wasn't working for me today, so I left it out of the present. I was, I actually was going to mention that in the presentation, <laughs> and control of right bracket wasn't working. So I was like, ooh, ooh, am I just going mad, or is there something wrong with my computer? And we'll just, we'll just leave that. <laughs> I usually just use the the control left, never the right. So, could it be that the cell um, could have? No, I was going to. Do it should just jump you back to where you came yeah, from. To where you came. I don't know. Control yeah. right works for me. It wouldn't work for me earlier on today. So there was something. <laughs> Must have been a user problem, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's working for me on the same sheet, but not across different sheets. Inputs are only as good as your outputs. Yeah, you, you know? got to test that. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Oakley. Nice to see you too, Wes. Brandon, that's the people I can see on my, and Richard and Paula, that's the people I can see at the moment in my screen. But uh, Teams is a little bit uh, wild when it comes to um, managing what shows on the screen. So I know that uh, they are trying to improve that, but whatever I'm seeing on my screen may not necessarily be what other people are seeing on their screens. So that's it. Oh, there's Danielle there. Hi, Danielle. Now I turned, I can, I just, I, I've done this in the past few sessions. I'm just going to uh, share my screen and I turned on the together mode so we can see some of the people who are with us before we go. Oh yes, let's do together mode, that's fun. <laughs> Oh, this thing again? <laughs> Where'd you get so, that at anyway? That's cool. So whoever turns on their video cameras uh, shows up in our, in our auditorium uh, as well, as long as there's seats available. If you want to turn on your cameras, you should be. There's a limit of 60 people or so. Who am I hitting on the head? <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's the way we can pretend we are together since we cannot meet in person. <laughs> Always call in trouble with that Paula. Yeah, and that <laughs> there's the, the rebel kids being misbehaving. <laughs> I'm poking you, Alan. It's not working. 
I should be in the front row. I'm a good kid. <laughs> yeah, and you are placed wherever teams decide to place you, so you cannot choose your place. Bad kids okay, go. everyone, it was a really good session. Paul, you were saying it was a heavy session. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you felt like that, but for me, it wasn't heavy at all. I found it very useful, very inter um, interesting, valuable. So, like I said, I'm going to share this with a few people I know that um, uh, it's a good refreshing for, for all of us who work with Excel on a daily basis. Right. I'll share the workbook oh. with you so you can share it on as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did, did anybody ever post where the link was going to be for the replay? I never saw that. Uh, it's not there yet. So uh, because we are not broadcasting directly to YouTube, I still need to download the video. I'll upload it to YouTube. And then I, in a couple of days, one or two days, maybe during the weekend, it's always uh, usually what happens. I will send out an email to everyone who responded, who, uh, yes, who registered to this session. And you will get an email from me with um, information about that. But we have, a YouTube, we have a YouTube video, uh, I mean channel. If you look for MS Excel Toronto on YouTube, you should be able to find our channel with the other sessions uploaded there. Uh, the videos are not hidden, so anyone can, can find that content uh, and, and watch the previous sessions. Okay. Any other questions? comments is every everyone is okay <laughs> okay thank you so much for joining us today it was a pleasure uh great stuff i feel so so good when we can deliver content that can be useful for for everyone which we hope it's the case on every session <laughs> don't forget yeah. to to join us there's a, one more thing paula um yeah. where can people find you yeah. before we we wrap up and disconnect the session um, you can find me on YouTube, <laughs> you can find me on my website, you can find me on LinkedIn is probably the quickest way to find me. Um, there will be links in the workbook as well that's sent out as well, so I'll add my YouTube channel to that too. Okay. So the, the website is theexileclub.com. Okay, and from there they can find, they can yeah. see where the other places where you are. Okay, thank you so much. Don't forget the next session uh, in about two weeks or so, the 29th about uh, ranges and then the other one uh, in October, I will be sending some information about that session. We may need to change the setting uh, because if a lot of people registers, I'm not sure if that will be the case or not, but if it is the case, this setting of uh, a team, Microsoft Teams meeting may not be enough to hold that event. I count on you to to spread the word about that. I think it will be a, a very special session, quite different from all the other ones we've uh, had. And some uh, we will have guests that it's not easy to get in uh, on a regular basis, uh, have them all together in just one session. So feel free to share the news if you'd like. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Good night, Thank everyone. you very much, everyone. Good morning. Good night. Good morning for Australia and good good evening for everyone else. <laughs> and good night from Ireland. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm ending the meeting now. <laughs>